go to be our healer. And I have kind of been made feel guilty because I've had three major surgeries in the last five years and have made, people have made me feel like I don't depend upon the Lord for my healing. But the way I have learned to look at it is that the doctors can do what they can do. But it's the Lord that heals you after the doc. The doctor can only do that much. That's right. The doctor can't knit those tendons back in my That's ankle. Right. Mm -hmm. The Lord is doing that. The doctor cut me open and he put stitches in it, but it's the Lord that healed that skin That's back right. together. That's right. When you cut your finger, it doesn't stay open forever because right. the Lord heals it. Our bodies were made so perfectly. When I had my shoulder operated on and I had nothing in this arm at all, and I still have issues with the nerves regenerating, and they said it would take three years, and I'm patient, I can wait. But I thank the Lord that it's coming back and that we were created and that he's healing me so that those nerves are coming yes. back Amen. and the doctors can't do that. That's right. I know I so, you know, I don't feel guilty at all no, no, for no. what I've done, even though yeah. people have made me feel that way and yeah. maybe it's just me. But I, I think doctors can do what their part. Yeah. It's just like Pastor Bob says, it's our part and God's part. You know, the doctors have their part, mm -hmm. and then God, God is, is the one yeah. who does the healing after the doctors Absolutely. have done all they can do. That's good. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Linda. All right. Willie! I, uh... Timing. <laughs> Time it. I uh my neighbor he uh, got sick. I didn't know he was in the hospital and I found out today. But I went down to see him today and uh I found out that he's he's got cancer. And he uh had come home one day and uh he was trying to get out of the car and he fell. He couldn't make it to the car. And I didn't know this, but my neighbor across the street came and got him into the house and everything. But anyway, I went down to the hospital to see him today. And I, I had a question for him. And I asked him, how was he and the Lord? And he said, okay, we okay. You know, I said, well, his name is Lynn. I said, if you passed away right now, God forbid. But if you passed away right now, where would you go? So he said, I think I go to heaven. Mm -hmm. I said, that's why I asked you that question. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to know. That's right. I said, because the Bible said these things are written so that you might know. Oh. So with that said, I led him to the Lord. Praise Man. God. I led him Hallelujah. to the Lord. Oh. You know, and and, and I, I, I felt so good because I love him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's my neighbor. Yeah. And, and I love him. Yeah. And his wife is next. Wow, you know, because she's sickly. They both are sickly. Yeah. You know, but she's next. Yeah. So Amen. I got her on the list. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's, that's what I like to hear. Okay, Frank. Good. All right, Willie, you mentioned timing. I got, a, I got a timing story for you. I got a call today, and uh, it was a fellow that I used to work with. He said, uh, this truck driver that brings chips out to the mill uh, gave me his phone number, and he, he asked me to call you and, and, and give his phone number to me. So uh, I called him, and and everything was, was uh, going well. But the story is going back when I was working. And this, I've been retired three years ago, so I, I can't remember exactly when this incident happened, but I, I shared it with the church. But anyway, uh, being an electrician, when something breaks, I have to go make an attempt to, to work on it, to fix it, whatever. 
So uh, they have truck dumpers where they back those trucks up full of chips and it, it raises it up hydraulically and dumps all the chips out. Well, this particular day, this number two truck dumper, there was something wrong with it. So I had to go down and, and check it out. And I don't, I don't remember where my partner was, but I ended up going down there by myself. So uh, the guy was happy to see me because I'm going to let his truck dump and, and he's going to be able to go, you know, get another load. So I, I go down there and uh, I start talking with him. I says, uh, have you ever given your life to the Lord? He says, uh, uh, no, sir. I said, would you like to? He said, uh, yes, sir. So we prayed right there at number two truck dumper wow. in the wood yard in front of God and everybody. Oh, you know, yeah. we didn't wait till we got to church. Yeah. We just prayed. Now, the timing of the Lord was, why did that dumper break? Yeah. Why did I have to go down there right as he was down there? But anyway, this guy calls me, and it's been, it's been five or six years, and he, he asked me, he said, you still preaching? I said, yeah. Are you still serving the Lord? He said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But uh, he was the guy that uh, every time we'd get booklets back there, I'd take him 20 booklets, and a week or two later, I, I want some more, I want some more. And he was passing them out at his church, yeah. you know. But, you know, five or six years later, if somebody's still serving the Lord, yeah. you knew it stuck, you that's know. That's right. And that's, that's a good feeling yeah. when you run across somebody that you, that you yeah. prayed for, yeah. and it stuck. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Anybody else? Not everybody one time, one at a time. Everything digitally in order now. What you got? All right. See if he needs prayer. See if he needs prayer, okay? What you Listening got? to what Linda was saying. And I know she's had several things that she went through this year, so have I. And I know that that devil can try to play tricks on your mind in thinking that, oh, where was God? Yeah. You in this hospital here again? Why are you in here? Where's God? Mm -hmm. So I got to the place where when I made it through uh, episode number one, and I know that God brought me through because the doctor wasn't there. They didn't know what to do. So I know it was God. So when the second incident came around, then I said, you know what? Just get out of my face. I'm just going to see what's going to happen now. Don't even try to put doubt in, yes. and um, uh, making me try to feel like God is not paying attention to me. I said, I read my word this morning. I did what I was supposed to do. And so I know God is with me. So I didn't even let him take me that road. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's growth. Someone said that, uh, where was God in uh, all of that when you were going through all of that? And uh, I remember saying, you know, when Jesus was going through all of that, you know where God was? God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself through his son. And when you uh, have those doubts, where is God? God is in you. And you're in God. And he says, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. Son, do we need to pray for you? Do we need to pray? You doing okay? You fine? Doing fine? You, you don't need no prayer. You need prayer? That's what church is all about. It's not just preaching and teaching. It's ministering to one another. Come on up here. Stand right up here. This He's going to pray. Come on, right here. You don't want no prayer? Okay. No problem? <laughs> but if you need prayer, we're here, son. And we, hey, psst, we love you. Amen. Amen. You know, it, it's so good not to have any axe to grind. We just, just love people. That's, a, that's what God told us. What you got, son? Did you say so? What? About what you said about your visitation last night oh, yeah. and what came to my spirit was 
I, I believe it's in Acts, but the disciples had a time of refreshing, yeah. you know, in the church. The Spirit came and refreshed them, and, and you know, I, then I heard, you know, I heard the Lord speak and say, you know, with a quiet voice, of course, in my heart, yeah. that, you know, like special cleansing, you know, sometimes He has to cleanse us, yeah. and he, when He shows up, He does it for us because he knows exactly what we have need of even before we ask it you know and and when he refreshes us he renews us to go back out there to do what he's called us to do again like that word that she used regenerating that was powerful man it hit me like when she said that when she said that god regenerates our bodies he regenerates our spirits too you know, and then that time of refreshing comes, and then we're ready to go back out there and face whatever's next. That's good. Amen. That's good. Um, amen. Sometimes you can read one scripture, and it's all you need. A lot of people don't understand that when you're walking in the Spirit, if you're not careful, that the world can get into you. There's a spirit of the world. How many know there's a spirit of the world? And if you're out there, if you don't know how to keep that spirit out, you don't really, you really, <laughs> you know that. If you don't know how to keep that spirit out, you get cold and indifferent and, and you don't know what's wrong with you. And you just need a good cleansing of getting the world system out. That's why reading the Bible and uh and just meditating on the Word of God and spending time with the Lord. You know, um, we have a neighbor over here that sometimes Susan me ride around in our little golf cart, you know, and she told us the other day, she called and said, y'all seem to be so happy, you know. Well, we got all kind of problems, but we're happy. The peace of God can be all in here, and everything around you is in turmoil. Hello, are you out there, church? See, that's the secret of walking in the Spirit, and, and most of you know that. Keep that Spirit out. It's, it's terminating, and you have to keep it out and wash yourself. You know, it's the same thing if you don't take a bath. You know, after about five weeks, you get pretty raunchy. I didn't get no reply on that out there at all. How many know if you don't take a bath over, at least, in that, you know, once a, once a year or something? <laughs> The, the, the stuff gets all over you, and you got to wash it, and you feel so refreshed. That's all that's wrong with a lot of people. They just need to get into the Word and take a good Holy Ghost bath in the Word of God. Preach it, Bob. I believe I will. <laughs> Come on, love me, church. All right, here we go. All right. God, okay. All right, who's going to give these out to everybody? Three aspects of the cross. Give everybody one of those. And Three aspects of the cross. I am going to read a scripture. I want to put it on the board, and we're going to go through this book a little bit. We won't cover everything tonight, but you need to understand the three aspects of the cross. And remember what I say. It's God's part and our part. Don't ever try to do God's part. Amen. Just do your part. And if you do your part, God will always, and he's faithful, he'll do his part. Okay? Okay. Now, put on the board up there, if you will, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. And um, we'll start getting the word into us tonight. All right, look at the board up there. Yet we know that a man is justified or reckoned righteous and in right standing with God, not by works of the law, but only through faith and absolute reliance on and heave to and trust in Jesus Christ the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now stop right there and think. When you read scriptures, just don't read them. 
Uh, is anybody in here justified? Let's see your hand. Raise your hand if you've been justified. You can't get no more justified than you are right now. Did you hear what I said? There are people that are trying to get themselves justified, and you're just going down the wrong road. But you've got to accept it, receive it, and just thank God all the time. Lord, thank you for justifying me. That word justified means just as if I have never sinned. It's hard for us to grasp that, to understand the work at the cross. So let's read a little bit more on that scripture now. Now, we are justified, how? Through faith, by faith. From beginning to end, it's by faith. Everybody say faith. Faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we, re we receive all the promises of God, how? Through faith. You don't have to feel it. I love to feel it. I love to feel the presence of God. But it's still true if you don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. Many things you won't feel, but you accept it by faith. You know it by faith. These things have been written that you might know. I like the scriptures that talks about know. You might know that God loves you. You might know that you're forgiven. You might know you're justified. You might know you're a child of God. You might know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. You might know you're not under the law. You might know you died to the law. You might know that sin shall not have dominion over you. You, you know. Everybody say no. Yeah. No. No. Do it again. No. no. Not in O. K-N-O-W. No, I'm a child of God. No, you got a rough day, you're, you're a child of God. Things didn't go too good in the office today, you're still a child of God. If my neighbor ain't talking to me no more, you're still a child of God. I ain't all over, you're still a child of God. Hey, Lou, man, when that gets inside of you, my goodness, gracious, good as you might even say, hallelujah. Go ahead and say it. I said, now, don't get radical on me now. But see, you've, you've got to know that. Now, you might feel lousy tonight, you're still saved. You might feel tired tonight, but you're still saved. It don't come and go. It don't come and go because you feel this way or feel that way. You name it, and I felt it. Anybody in here say amen? amen. Yeah. You're saved by God's grace through faith, not of works, not according to your feelings. Your feelings will come and go. I love to feel good. I feel good all the time. That's my, that's, that's my bag right there. I want to feel good all the time. But sometimes I don't feel good. But when you get 84, we won't go that way. But I'm telling you, you better have a lot of faith stored up. Amen. Yes, sir, young fella. A lot of faith stored up. Isn't that right, Susie? Amen. All right, look at this now. Therefore, even we ourselves have believed on Christ Jesus. Now, Paul is talking about himself and to his um, men and, that are working with him and the people that work with Paul. He says, um, believe, uh, boy, I can finally lose my play. Okay. Once, therefore, even we ourselves have believed on Christ Jesus, why? In order to be justified. And that's what he's saying. He's giving a testimony there. By faith in Christ and not by works of the law, for we cannot be justified by any observance of the ritual of the law given by Moses, because by keeping legal rituals and by works of hum no human being can ever be justified, declared righteous, and put in right standing with God. Well, that takes care of that. How many understood that? Raise your hand. How many didn't understand it? Raise your hand. More, oh, 100%. That's pretty good. I'll give you 100. 100. <laughs> All right, look, at, this is exciting. Now, put, um, put uh, 19 up there. 219, and then we're going to go in the book after I get these two finished. For I, through the law, under the operation of the curse of the law, have in Christ's death for me myself died to the law. Right. Woo! Wow. Are you trying to keep the law? <laughs> Child, you better recognize you died to the law. When Christ died, you died. 
You mean I, don't, I can just break all the commandments? No, you don't understand. See, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit, the lawgiver comes into you, and he's the one that directs and guides you now. Not a bunch of rules over here written down. No, inside of you is Christ. The Holy Spirit is living in you, and he directs you and guides you. I don't want to be mean anymore. I don't want to rob banks anymore. Why? Because inside the Holy Spirit directs me and guides me. I walk in the Spirit. He leads me. He directs me. Not these set of rules. No. The lawgiver that wrote this, these set of rules lives in me. How many would rather have a written, the written or would you rather have the Holy Spirit in you? We got the Holy Spirit in us. So you understand that. So listen and, and understand the movement of the Holy Spirit in you. Understand what he's directing you and guiding you. Okay? That's what you got to do. Now look what Paul says. Mm, this is so good. It makes me want to shout. <clears throat> Baby will. Hallelujah. Look at it. Mm. All right. Myself died to the law and all the law's demands upon me so that I may henceforth live to and for God. Oh, we got to camp out there. Whew. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. Myself died to the law. See, I died to the law. He says that quite a bit in the, in, the, in the scriptures. In fact, you'll find that in Romans chapter 7, verse 4, too. I died to the law. Everybody say, I died to the law. Because see, the law brings you under condemnation. I could go into a church and tell you if it's a legalistic church. You can sense it. If you're walking in the Spirit, if your Spirit's been liberated, you can tell if it's, if it's legalistic. See, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes. If the Spirit of the Lord lives in us, there's liberty in us. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. The Spirit of the Lord is in me. The Spirit of the Lord is in you. There should be liberty in you to shout, to praise God. Amen. Not to walk on the ceiling. I'm not talking about that. I quit doing that years ago. But you ought to feel that and sense that liberation inside of you. Free. That's what we all want. That's what humanity wants. Free. Not to go our own way. Not to do our own thing. No, but to love people. To love God. That freedom in us. Oh, it's so wonderful. I walked out of the house this morning and it was just so wonderful. Oh, I felt such liberty and freedom in God. I felt God's love in my heart. The bird, we got one bird over there, I think he's still singing. You heard him all day, he was over there working on my roof. That bird's still singing at nighttime. I'm just kidding. But he's just singing his heart out. And that's what we are to do, just sing. Just singing in the rain. Singing in the house. Singing, singing, singing. Now you can't do that unless you've got some liberty in you. Anybody got any liberty in this place? Go ahead, go ahead. Just go ahead and do it. Go ahead. Do it, Susan. You got liberty. I can look at your face tell you got it. Go ahead, Susan, sing. Go ahead. Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain. Singing in the rain. Okay, I'll go turn that page. <clears throat> All right, let's read that again. For, for I through the law, under the operation of the curse of the law, have in Christ's death for me myself died to that law. When did you die to the law? When Christ died, you died. God had put all of us in Christ, and when Christ died, we died with him. The old Adam died with Christ. Amen. And when Christ was buried, we were buried with him, and that's what water baptism shows people. Death, burial, and resurrection. And when Christ was raised from the dead, we were raised with him to walk in the newness of life. Now you accept that by faith. Everything is by faith. Okay? Now, 
and all the law demands upon me. In other words, Paul is saying, I died to the law and all of its demands on me. You get that law off of you. You'll find liberty. You'll find freedom in the spirit. I know some of you are straining to understand what I'm saying. But I'll keep saying it until you come into that liberty of the spirit. Oh, I tell you what, there is such freedom in Christ. No, not to go my own way, but to enjoy the presence of God. See, God is a person that is totally liberated. How many of you know God's liberated? And when you get liberated, you'll, you'll connect more with him. See, things, things that uh, you'd be like, like him, you'll be free. So free that you can worship and praise him, love him, love people. Bob, what do you think about so-and-so? I don't. I just pray for him. How are you out there, church? See, 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 the devil, let me tell you something. The devil will throw all this stuff and you'll go thinking about this, and then you're thinking about this, and you're going to solve this. And, oh, what about this? What about that? What about this? What, oh my, what am I going to do over here? <laughs> That's the trouble with a lot of people. Their head is full of nonsense. Full of what's going to happen here? What about this? What about that? Listen, if you died, that ain't too bad. Ain't nobody shouting in here but me. Because you ain't going to die. He that believeth in me, Jesus said, shall never die. Oh, you'll quit breathing. How many wants to take your body to heaven? You'd be the most miserable person in the world. No, God's got great wisdom. He's going to leave your body down here and going to put it in the ground. But he's got plans for it. Later on, he's going to resurrect it. You think I look good now? Yeah, you wait till I get my resurrected body. See, we've got to meditate on these things. See, I'll never die. See, some people are fearful of death. Christ took that away too. That's in Timothy. He annulled, he annulled death. You don't have to worry about dying. How many are scared to die? Don't raise your hand. I saw one person did that. That was good. Do you want to? It's like the man that uh, the Sunday school teacher was teaching his young boys, and uh, he said, now, "How many wants to go to heaven?" There was ten kids in his class, and none of them raised their hand. They wanted to go to heaven. And one didn't raise his hand. So after the, uh, the, he dismissed everybody, he came to the young boy and said, Son, you, don't you want to go to heaven? And the young boy said, Well, yeah. Well, why didn't you raise your hand? He said, Oh, I thought you said right now. <laughs> he didn't want to go right now. How many is ready to go right now? It's a, uh, one, two, three, four. Look at there. Look, one, two, three, four. We're not scolding you all. Hang around. Go ahead and be miserable while you're down here. That's what, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That, that, that's what uh, 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 Psalms 90, verse 10. You can live to be 80 if you want a whole bunch of more mess. Yeah, you read that again. It talks about, uh, if you, it, you know, three score and 10, but if you go to live to be 80, you're just going to have another 10 years of mis misery. Read it, read it again. Yeah, that's what I said. Uh -huh. How many know that? I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Okay. Are right, you ready for the book? All right, here we go. Open the page. Here we go. Time's going by fast. Mm. I am crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now the Holy Spirit's going to have to show you that. And some of you might be able to say, yeah, that's true. I, I do that. I understand that. Now everybody turn to page number two. I have been made rich because of Christ. First aspect, here's the first aspect. Christ died to give us life. Let's look at number two. Christ was made sin to make us righteous. Wow. Christ became weak to make us strong. Anytime that I feel weak, I always say the opposite. I always say, Lord, I am strong in you. I am strong in thee. In fact, God uses weak folks. So when you, when you, even in your physical sense, if you feel weak, 
you say, I am strong. See, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you say is important. Faith comes by hearing. And when you say, I am strong, faith is coming to you. Okay? So it's good to remember that. Christ became weak to make us strong. There's all the scriptures. I'm going through it roughly tonight because of the time element. Christ suffered shame to give us glory. Christ took stripes on his back for our healing. Christ dealt, <clears throat> dealt with our old self or old nature that we might be a new creation and a partaker of his divine nature. Now, any time my old, listen, any time, everybody look at me now. Any time your old nature begins to flare up like uh, ain't nothing going to happen around here. I mean, this. You get mad at yourself, you're mad at everybody, you know, nothing going my way. You know, you got three meals a day, you got a house to live in, you got clothes on your back, and you're miserable. That's the old self manifestation. So you gotta recognize, see, how many of you know if you're gonna solve a problem, you gotta know what the problem is? Everybody look at me. How many love me? Let me see your hands. Okay, and then we'll see. I'm going to say this and then we'll check that out again. <clears throat> the self life is deadly. Our old self life is deadly. Always thinking down and out. You died to that. When Christ died, that old self life died. And you keep it dead. By the reckoning yourself. Everybody say reckon. reckon. That didn't hurt, did it? Oh, yo, that's great. Yeah. Reckon yourself to be dead indeed to that attitude. But I am alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. So we died with Christ. We were buried with Christ. And here's the good news. We were raised with Christ to walk in the newness of life. And now that, that resurrected power is available in the Holy Ghost for every believer. But you've got to appropriate it by faith. Amen. So you did, I died, I died to sin, but I'm alive unto God through Christ Jesus my Lord. God watches over his word to perform it. If nobody speaks his word, he don't have anything to, to perform. Yeah, you've got to understand how God operates, how he works. If, if jealousy rose up in me, I know exactly how to handle it. It's quiet in here. Do you know how to handle it? Jealousy. Thank you, Lord, I'm dead indeed under jealousy. But, I like that but. You know, when I was a kid, we had a lot of butt meat. How many of ever eaten any butt meat? I was growing up on butt meat. Look at, look at Elizabeth there. Give me a slice of that butt meat. Real salty, man, butt meat. But, but I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive unto God. How many of you get what you say? When we talk, we are sowing. We're sowing. What are we sowing? I, I pray for people, you know, and they go back in the old same habits again. Nobody loves me. I'll never amount to anything. That's right. You are your worst enemy. <laughs> Somebody wave at me. Don't put that brick down back there. This is resurrected week. Yeah, Christ died on the cross. Three days in the grave. Saturday, Friday, and Thursday. Three days. Hmm, must have, must have been uh, crucified on Thursday. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Three days in the grave. Count it. Start from the resurrection to go back. One, two, three. Where would that put you? Tell me. Thursday. That's okay. Thursday. Very simple, not complicated. But the thing is, he was raised from the dead. He's not in that, he's not dead anymore. He's alive. And I tell you what, he lives in you and he lives in me. All right, let's move on here now. Christ became poor that we might become rich. 
Christ defeated Satan and conquered the host of hell. It was for our victory. And now all those scriptures, and you can take that home, look them up, study them, and get the feel of that. All right, let's go to the first aspect of the cross. We see Jesus as our substitute, what he did for me. But as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. There's times you've got to learn to give up things. Then there's times you've got to learn to receive. Receive his love. Receive his kindness, receive his mercy, receive his grace, receive his presence, receive, receive. When you learn to receive from the, uh, from the Lord and from the promises of God's word, that's what builds us up in the faith. But as many as receive him, people say, well, I believe in him. Well, have you received him? Like Willie said to, to his neighbor, you have to receive. All the love in the world is available to all of us, and some people just don't, I don't feel God's love where well, you don't know how to receive it. Receive it by faith. He can't love you no more than he loves you right now. That's a fixed deal. He loves you. See, all these things I talk about, how many of you know I walk through it? 84 years old, I've walked through, see where a lot of you are, I, I've been through that. Susan's been through all that. I remember there's times I'd come home from work, man, I'm telling you, I'd, I'm going to quit that job. I've had enough of it. I tell you, them people out there are crazy. Everybody but me. <laughs> huh? Stop that foolishness. Get a hold of yourself. You're a child of the king. Act like it. Think like it. Smell like it. Grab yourself by the collar. You straighten up, Bob. That's what I did. And I begin to believe the word of God. Now I speak what I believe. Put that on the board. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Yet we have the same spirit of faith as he, that is King David, and you can search it out, had who wrote, I have believed and therefore have I spoken. Now Paul is saying, we too believe and therefore we speak. What do you believe? Speak what you believe, not what you feel, not what somebody's told you. Speak what you know in the word of God. You speak the word of God. Amen. Very simple, not complicated. Now, see, you have to learn to make that shift. I had to learn to do that because, and I thank God for my wife because she helped me out a lot in that area because I had a tendency to go negative and she could always go positive. And I had to change. And it was rough. It was real rough. I had to change my thinking. That's, how many remember that message I preached, stinking thinking? How many remember that? Yeah. I mean, you still got stinking thinking. Don't raise your hand. Get rid of the stinking thinking. And start speaking what you believe. Because you're going to get what you sow. That's an eternal law. Any, uh, let's, let's check it out. If you sow okra, what you going to get? Okra. You smart. If you uh, sow corn, what do you get? Every time. Every time. It might be sweet corn, though, or it could be... Well, that's <laughs> true. Well, if you sow sweet corn, you're going to get sweet corn. If you sow sour corn, you're going to get... <laughs> But you're never going to get cream of corn, okay? <laughs> Unless you make it. <laughs> Isn't he funny? <laughs> you, can't, listen, you can't get me excited. I love, I love you, son. You still my son. Oh, let me check this guy out over here. If you sell oatmeal, what do you get? <laughs> How many love me out there? You know, I think when you come to church, you ought to get loosened up a little bit. Amen. Throw off of those old 
worldly altitudes and attitudes. And, you're feeling better already, aren't you? As I can tell. All right, look here. Here we go. If I shall confess with thy mouth, how many of you know that's our, our part? The Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. So God does the saving. We confess, we believe, we speak what we believe, and we speak it. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now that's a principle there. See, you have to understand that's a principle and everything that, that all the promises in the Word of God, that's a promise right there. All the promises come to us the same way. By confession and believing in your heart. Confess in your heart what you believe. Okay? So if you believe you're no good, then you're going to develop emotions that will make you feel that you're no good. Hello, are you out there? It is so simple and it's not complicated, but to, to be able to break those old habits, you know, I talk with a lot of people and counsel with them. It, and they're, they're good folks, but they just don't know how to talk yet. They talk ugly. Talk about everybody, talk about themselves, and they don't know that, they, what, that they're sowing seed and they're getting what they're sowing. Hello? Mm-hmm. Tell it like it is, I believe I will. Tell it like it is, I believe it will. Because I had to break those old habits. Oh, man, those old habits are hard to break sometimes. But, you see, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens you and me. All right, look what it says. By this first aspect we receive. Notice this, we receive. Everybody say receive. receive. All right, let's read it. Forgiveness, yes. cleansing, yes. peace, position, power, Presence of Christ, priesthood, protection, justification, just as if we never have sinned. Are you thinking about your justification? Or are you thinking about that? You're not just good enough. Now, that, that's, that, that's, that's a bad one right there. I got news for you. Ain't none of us good enough. It ain't about our goodness. It's about God's grace. Man. Forget about forget about that old garbage. Move yourself out of that arena and realize in God I am more than a conqueror. I am God's son. I am God's daughter. God will never leave me, never forsake me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. God's given me power over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt me. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Somebody talk about me, you're talking about God's creation. You're talking about God's temple. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Always overcome evil with what? Good. Always. You get what you sow. You get what you sow. So some people will never come into victory like they should because they won't stop the old habits. You've got to stop the old thinking. What, what have you been thinking all day? That might be the reason you're stinking tonight. I'm going to say that again. That was fun. <laughs> See, I know that to be true. Because I ain't going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell it like it is. But I always put a little humor to it. Make it you can see, receive it a little bit better. Look, yet we have the same spirit of faith. Faith is a spirit. As he had who wrote. See, they didn't have verses in the Bible and chapters in, in the original uh, language, you know. So it'll be like it has, it has been said or it was written. And, and, and King David wrote that. And Paul is quoting what King David said. And we have the same faith as King David had, who wrote. Therefore, have I spoken? We too believe, and therefore we speak. Amen. If you think you're no good, you're programming yourself to be no good. That's just the way it works. When you start speaking what you believe, that God loves you, that you're a child of God, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. 
Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Man, you just keep speaking that. You keep saying that. That's why we wrote those blue sheets. We've had people come by our house and they just, they, they ain't got hardly any spiritual life. We just, put, we just get the scripture sheet. I said, now you start speaking this. And I'll guarantee you, the time they get through that book, they're jumping in a jiving. And I get up here and jump and jive with them. Some of you ain't jumped and jiving so long, you don't know. If... <laughs> Susan, show them how to do it, huh? <laughs> Watch it, flower. How many know I, I'm speaking truth now? Willie's, Willie, up, Willie up there says, tell the tooth to nothing but the tooth. <laughs> All right. You might have to change a little bit of your thinking tomorrow. All right, let's turn our page to the, the second aspect of the cross. Identification. What he is doing in me. Now remember this. Everybody look at me. What God has done for us at the cross what God is doing in us right now. You should be able to come up here and tell all of us what God is doing in you right now. You might have to get rid of that pride. That's what I had to do. I tell you, he's, he's meddling me down. He's working in my heart, my spirit, and meddling me down by his spirit. It is done by his spirit. Not by might, not by what. In fact, we have a flag up there that says that. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Yes, not by power nor might of man. And see, you put your faith in the Holy Spirit to do the work in you. He has begun a good work in me. And he, he, who's he? That's God Almighty, the Holy Spirit, will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. Philippians 1, 6. Put that on the board. Because see, if you're just trying to do it in your own effort, you're going to fail and be the miserable person in the world. Look what it says. Paul is talking here now. He says, and I am convinced. What are you convinced of, Paul? And sure of this very thing. What is that, Paul? That he who began a good work on you, in you. See, God works from the inside. Everybody's trying to get the outside fixed. No, no, it'll break down. It'll break down again. I said it'll break down again. You get the inside fix, and the outside usually will follow. Now, Lewis says that he who began a good work in you will continue until the day of Jesus Christ. Remember, until the day of Christ. That's the rapture. For the day of the Lord is the second coming. Right up to the time of his return, that is Christ's return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Man, some of you ought to be jumping out and shouting on that. You thought you was going to change yourself, didn't you? You're just going to get uglier, that's all you're going to do. No, when you let him do the work in you, it'll start manifesting. And every, even it'll manifest in your speech, in your thinking, in your attitudes towards people. Everything will look different because inside the temple of God, God is doing the work and you can't help from loving people. You can't help from blessing people. That's just the way it works. You don't have to try. Are you still trying? Stop it. Look what it says. Bring it to full completion in you. Where's your faith at? It better be in God doing that work in you. You better every day thank him. Lord, thank you that you're changing me. But the Bible says uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, um, yeah, that's right, 3, uh, verse 18, I think it is. We are being changed from glory to glory. How? By the Spirit of God. See, it's total trust and confidence in the Lord to produce what He tells us to do, to produce it in us, 
where he can do it through us. Look at this. What God has done for us, what God is doing in us, notice this, and what God is going to do through us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quit losing ground and start remembering that. Man, are you convinced? Are you like Paul? Are you convinced? Hmm? I hope so. All right, let's look what it says. Here's our identification. That's uh, page four. Knowing this, remember I'm talking about knowing this, and notice this now. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. When did that happen? In Calvary. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Romans 6, 6. Do you know it? Oh, I thank God I didn't always know it. I got to be honest with you. I mean, I went around that mountain. I was telling you, uh, you get tired of going around. But then I realized he did it for me. And I just begin to relax in God. And I begin, the revelation begin to come in. And I begin to know. Know inwardly. Know in my heart. Know in my spirit. Know. Knowing. Knowing. I love the knowing in the Bible. All right, let's go to like, look at there now. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now you read that and the average man reads that and they say, oh, well, you know. Uh, now wait a minute, God watches over his word to perform it and your faith has got to be in God to perform it. Hello, are you out there? You say, well, it ain't working. I know it ain't working for you because, you ain't, because you're not putting your faith in God to do it. Anything in me that, that, that if, if I have a bad thought about anybody, I instantly deal with that just by, Lord, I thank you that I died to that 2,000 years ago and I reckon myself to be dead. Reckoning simply means you consider it already done. God counts those things that be not as though they are. See, that jealousy in you might be just, <laughs> and you say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I died to that 2,000 years ago. But I'm alive. See, what you do, you're canceling out the negative and accentuating the positive, the resurrected life of Christ. By faith. By speaking it. But if you don't speak it, well, I'm thanking it. No, you speak it. If thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, if thou will believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If thou will speak with thy mouth that I died with Christ, but, I was, but I've been risen with Christ to walk in the newness of life, the Holy Spirit watches over the word. You activate the Holy Spirit by what you say, and he does it. Amen. Simple, it's not complicated. The Bible says that God... watches over his word and honors his word above his name. Because he's only as good, or his name is only as good as his word. So he honors his word knowing that his, the result of that, his name will be honored. How many you understand that? You're only as good as your word. All right, look what it says. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from the dead to life and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master because you are not under law, but under grace. Paul says something like this. I am what I am by the grace of God. God's grace working in us. But see, we're an instant generation. I like that. Instant pudding, instant cake, instant, right, instant grits. I want it now, I want it now. You've got to learn to be patient and trust God to do the work in you. Some, of, some Christians are just wasting their time down here. Just wasting their time trying, trying to do it themselves. And Paul had to get out to the Galatians. 
And he said something like this. You started in the spirit and now you think you're going to, be made, you're going to make yourself perfect by, by doing these rituals and getting back under the law again? He got after him. You're frustrating the grace of God. Our faith must rely totally upon God to save us and to sanctify us in here. Sanctification is a process that God does in us, but we got to cooperate with him. Our part is believing and receiving that he is working in me, making me willing to do his good pleasure. And that's scripture too. Okay, you got that? All right. All right, let's go down. Look at the, look at it now. <clears throat> By this second, we're talking about the seven, the, the, the second aspect. Three things to remember. All right, look at it. We know, we reckon, and we do not yield to sin. Anybody can remember that. Know, reckon, and do not yield to sin. Now, what happens if you yield to sin? Well, let me tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to confess it. And God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But here's what's going to happen. When you sin, you're going to feel bad about yourself. You just feel miserable. You feel like nothing is working. Everything Pastor Bob says ain't working. Because you don't believe God's forgiven you and you haven't forgiven yourself. That will be your challenge, to forgive yourself. That's a hard one. How many testified of that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're helping the devil out if you don't accept God's word and receive your forgiveness and you'll walk around with your head down. When people walk around with their heads down, I know exactly what's wrong. People walking in with their heads down. I can read that. I can read people's expressions and their faces and all that. I could do that because I've got many years of experience. I, I know when you're up and I know when you're down. And I love you when you're down and I love you when you're up. But I like you a lot better when you're up because it sure encourages me a whole lot. I mean, love me. See, we learned that with my kids. Our kids would come home from school. What, what's wrong, Sandra? That teacher just won't do anything I tell her to do, Daddy. I said, no, sit down, darling. Your teacher's in authority. You obey her. She does not have to obey you. Do you understand that? Yeah, I guess so, Daddy. Well, listen, now let's make sure we got that straight. She's there. I'm paying tax money for her salary to teach you A, B, and C. Do you see? See? And you... Change that kid's attitude by talking to that child and get them to see the right way to look at things. The teacher is not there in that school to put you down, but to help you. Duh. And there's grown-ups just like that. Have anybody ever met it? Don't look at your neighbor. Quit. You stop that. How many know their husband, your husbands? You can tell when they're down. Here comes Pastor Bob. What's wrong, Pastor Bob? Nobody ain't paying no attention to my teaching. I might as well quit. How many love me? Tell it like it is. I aim to tell it. All right, here we go. The first and second aspect of the cross is for my own benefit. The third aspect is for others. I got five minutes so to address that. And this is where the cross begins to work daily in us. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we also are to lay down our lives for our brothers. We deal with couples over the years since we have dealt with so many hundreds of couples and they don't realize the self-life is what the problem is. Well, you said, said that, yeah, yeah, but you said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show them the scripture. They'll destroy one another and they usually do. 
We give them all this information that they need. They can study and, and learn how to, to, to uh, love one another and to take care of one another. And they, don't, they don't read it. They won't read it. They just want to fight. Destroy their marriage. It's awful. How many love me? Two people so far. That's good. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. And you know it's the truth too. All right. We, and we are to lay down our lives for our wives, our brothers, our neighbors. You put it there. Whew. Are you kidding? You mess with me and you'll get a fat lip. <laughs> for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus, look at the reward there, also might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. So when, we, look at me, everybody look at me. When we, look, when we sacrifice and let death work, let's say in me, that life might work in you. And then death works in you, that life might work in me. It's no more all about me, it's about others now. See, when you read the scriptures, you'll find that Christ did not please himself. Now I'm going to ask you, what type of person are you? You want everybody to please you, or are you trying to please others? Husbands, are you trying to please your wife? Wife, are you trying to please your husband? Quiet in here. Look what it says. Foolish one, that which thou soweth is not quickened, made alive, except it die. Lord, how can I get victory over this? <clears throat> Let the flesh die. I get angry. Let the flesh die. Some of you shutting me out now, I can tell. Mm-hmm. Okay, just keep on. He that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. See, Christianity is a reverse. The world is get everything you can out of people. Get on top of everything. You be number one. You're the best. But that's not the spirit of Christ. He that humbles himself, God will raise. If you're trying to raise yourself, you're just lowering yourself. When you come to that place to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and I'm talking to myself too, when I humble myself, it'll be God's responsibility. See, that'll be God's part to raise himself. I want to share this one thing, and, and, and you got that, take it home, and you read it, study it, and, and we'll go back over it the next time a little bit more clear. I was in a, a service one, one day at the Shield of Faith many years ago. We had this guy to come in that was pretty good at casting out demons. He was good. And I'm sitting there, and he gives an invitation. He says, if you think you've got trouble with a demon, well, come up here, and, and, I, and I'll cast him out. And the Lord said, go up there, Bob. <laughs> Lord, I'm the pastor. If I go up there... Gosh, if the pastor's got a demon, the, the rest of the congregation, what are they going to think? Now, how many of you know what my problem was? Pride. Pride. So I'm sitting there sweating. A few people came up and he delivered them. I said, man, that's pretty good. And the Holy, and the Holy Spirit said, you going to go up there, Bob? But Lord, Say, you can either keep your, keep your problem or you can get delivered. Say, how many times I've given invitations and I could, I could point people out, you need to come up. But they sit back there, whole, that dignified Pharisee look. Y'all know it well, I know you do. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going up. I went up there. Out of him now in Jesus' name. Nothing happened. I go back and I sit down and I said, Lord, I went up there and uh, nothing happened. And the Lord said, yes, yeah, yeah, something happened. I said, what happened? You lost your pride. 
Boy, I feel better. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? See, we don't know the things that are so keeping us from getting delivered and walking in liberty. And we fight ourselves and we fight the Holy Ghost and we fight everybody because we just think we're just the greatest in the world. But listen to the Holy Spirit. When he tells you to do so, obey. Simple, not complicated. Obey. Obedience is better than apple pie. I missed that. <laughs> Read that book when you go home. Check your life out and see if you're obeying what the word of the Lord says. Not just listen to it, not just talking about it, but you are 24-7 obeying what's those three aspects of the cross. Because if you do, you're going to change your life. Because that's what changed Susan and me. We learned the three aspects of the cross. And I tell you, it's sweet. It's so sweet. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you, Father, that not accusing people of anything, but yet charging them in the name of the Lord to begin to activate the word of God through faith by speaking, thus saith what the Lord says. Father, I thank you now for a mighty move of your spirit in the inward part of our being. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, you have begun a good work in us. Yes, Lord, we're going to let you continue that work until Christ comes and takes us home. And it's so exciting to get victory over the world, the flesh, and the devil. And I thank you, Father. I've not always had it, but I thank you, Lord, by your doings, you've given it to me. And I love you for it, and I appreciate it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right.